Welcome to the Mom Entrepreneur Success Podcast with Mariana C. Ruiz, the podcast for the go-getter mom entrepreneur who refuses to let motherhood slow her down from achieving success and making an impact. Tune in Mondays to learn the success secrets of top influencers who also happen to be moms so that you can reach the success, freedom, and impact you desire. Ready to create success on your terms, mom entrepreneur? Head on over to marianacruiz.com slash success to download your copy of The Game Plan. It's a step-by-step process to get you results and enjoy every step of the journey. Because as mom entrepreneurs, it's about designing a business around our lives and not the other way around. Plus, I also walk you through areas where you might get stuck to help you avoid the pitfalls that so many of us have to go through. So head on over to marianacruiz.com to get your copy now. Welcome to the Mom Entrepreneur Success Podcast. On this episode, I have a very special guest, Mary Catherine Johnson. She is an author, an entrepreneur, a mom of two boys, and the founder of Mommy Loves, Parent Entrepreneur Power, and My Three Freedoms. Welcome to the show, Mary Catherine. Hey there, Mariana. I am so, so inspired and thankful that you you invited me. So I can't wait to chat. Awesome. So I want to start with your story of entrepreneurship. I know it's been a long road and you've done some amazing things. So can you tell us a little bit about how you started in business and give us a little background of what that looked like for you? Uh, Yeah, so that we are not going to be here all day chatting. (laughs) Um, I will try and (laughs) condense it. Basically, how I got here is part of the ongoing story of where I'm going. So I'll just share some highlights. Um, it It all is wrapped around being a mom. So I have to start there. I I was married quite young. I was 19 and my husband was 20. And uh, we specifically didn't try to have kids for at least the first 15 years we were married, um, which was pretty unique in both of our families. So, um, but that was our choice. And so when we finally decided to start a family, uh, we tried for a year to get pregnant and uh, finally succeeded after a year. Uh, Then I had a miscarriage at eight weeks. And of course, was devastated because no one in my family had ever experienced this. I didn't even know it was a possibility. I mean, it was really everyone, uh, every female in my family that I knew of, um, back to my grandparents, had gotten pregnant before the age of 20, whether they wanted to or not. That's when it happened. And so for me, starting at 35, you know, I was almost 35. It, I thought maybe something's wrong with me. You know, maybe my body doesn't know how to do this. So we tried for another year to get pregnant and again, finally succeeded. And then I had another miscarriage at 11 weeks. And that was almost to the day of the first miscarriage. So it was really weird. Okay. Kind of freaky. And then I was pregnant a third time, only a month later. And this one stuck. Okay, so finally I was pregnant, carried full term, um, well, not quite full term, um, because at, uh, at about 30 weeks, I uh, went into early labor. And so I was on bed rest. I was actually in the hospital for about, uh, for, for a week on drugs to stop the labor. And then I was in bed rest when I went back home. But, but before that happened, when I finally was pregnant and was able to walk around and, you know, start showing, I mean, that's what we always want, right? We start showing, it's like, we got to show the world, you know? And when I finally did that, when I, when finally one stuck, um, I felt like I'd passed the, the toughest class I had ever taken in college. And so I bought a blank white maternity t-shirt at Target. And I went into my uh, Microsoft Excel program and I created like this, this fall semester report card, I called it. And it was pregnancy 101 was the first class that was on my report card. And I got an A plus on that class, finally. And then the other second class I took in that fall semester was pregnancy prevention. And I finally failed that class because it was so <laughs> tough. You know, it was tough to get pregnant. It was tough to keep one. So it was like, I finally got an A plus at pregnancy 101 and I finally failed pregnancy prevention. So that was a really big deal. And I took that, the printout of that Excel spreadsheet and I brought it down to a local sports shop with that white blank maternity shirt. And I asked them to put that report card on that shirt. And I wore that shirt everywhere. And Mariana, the, the, 
response I got was really incredible. I mean, everybody coming up and asking me, where did you get that? Because this was in 1998. Um, mm -hmm. Asking me, where did you get that? Oh my gosh. And of course I would start proceeding to tell them how they could make it like I made it. And they were saying, no, I don't want to make it. I want to buy it. Who's, who, where'd you buy it? And it was like light bulbs going off in my head. Oh my gosh, they want to buy this? You mean I know how to make this and they want to buy it? But before I could pursue that any further, I went into early labor. And then, of course, I had a newborn. So you know what happens when you have a newborn. Life just takes over, especially your first. It's like a shock, a total shock yeah. to your system. <laughs> so uh, uh, lo and behold, I put that shirt away and life goes on until I was pregnant again three years later. So now it's 2001 and I pull out that report card shirt, wear it around, get the same exact reaction, and I start to come up with more designs and thinking about it. And then I lost my job <laughs> and I was uh, the main breadwinner of my family and my husband stayed home with our first son. And uh, so I had to find a new job and I found a new job. Finally, this amazing woman hired me, uh, even though I was seven months pregnant, she hired me. I mean, I couldn't have hidden my, my pregnant belly under the, the best um, camouflage maternity clothing, right? I mean, it was obvious, but she hired mm -hmm. me anyway. I was totally, totally blessed. And then uh, a month into the job, I fell and broke both my legs. Wow. Uh, so I was eight months pregnant with both legs, each leg uh, in a cast up to the knee. And uh, that, that uh, got my attention. Let's just say that. Uh, I, uh, I, I couldn't believe it. Um, I couldn't do anything. I couldn't uh, walk on my own. I luckily, one of, the, one of the bones that I broke was in my foot, so I could actually have a walking cast. But the other one was my ankle, so I couldn't put any pressure on that foot at all, on that leg at all. And so I had a walker. Um, they were going to give me a wheelchair, and it's no, at first they were going to give me crutches. I'm like, are you kidding me? I have an eight month pregnant belly out in front of me, and you want me to walk around in crutches off balance, only walking on one leg. You, you want me to break my neck? I mean, there's no way I can walk on crutches. Um, so I got a walker, which was a little more stable. Uh, you know, that little, that thing that little old ladies walk around town with. Yeah, I got to, I got to walk around my house with it. Um, but I couldn't do anything. I couldn't wash my hair. I couldn't take a, a shower. I couldn't take a bath. I couldn't stand long enough to make lunch or breakfast. I couldn't clean the house. I couldn't do laundry. I mean, I couldn't do anything. And of course I couldn't work. I couldn't do anything. And I'm a type A kind of gal that is hard charging. I'm going to go do what I got to do. And I could not do anything. I got very depressed. I'd never been depressed before, so I didn't really realize it was happening. Um, and uh, got through that. I won't go into the details unless you want to know more, but uh, I got through that. And basically when I finally healed these legs, finally delivered the baby, I got to go through labor and delivery with those wonderful casts on. Um, I got to the other side of this when my newborn now was about three weeks old. And I looked back and said, if I can do this with my sense of humor intact, I can do anything. Mm -hmm. And uh, I started Mommy Loves, which is a novelty maternity company, starting with that very first design of the report card. I started that 18 months later, and this is 2003 now. And I doubled the revenue every single year after that. Um, and then finally totally outsourced everything and made it into a residual income business in 2010. And that freed me up to, uh, to do the other things that you mentioned that I'm doing. That is so incredible and so inspiring. I cannot imagine, I just can't imagine going through any of that. <laughs> um, but I love how you stayed with your determination and your sense of humor, like you said, and you, and you pulled yourself back together and you said, I can do anything. I think that is the biggest lesson for any mom, no matter what you're struggling with, just take the pieces and think of what else you can do. If you can go through the struggle that you've gone through, it's such a great lesson for us. Thank you. And that's true. You don't have to break your legs to do this. Okay. I wouldn't, I wouldn't advise that, <laughs> but you can look at your life. Right. And I know, I know every one of us has a story. You may not have broken your legs at eight months pregnant, but I know there's something else you have overcome. And if you just take that situation, go back to it, 
relive it. Think about what you did and how you got yourself through it. And if there were people that helped you or, or the mistakes you made, we learn more from the things we regret and the mistakes we make than just the experience itself. So relive it, figure it out. And yes, create your inspiration from it. Yeah, I love that. I think that is such a powerful lesson. Thank you. And um, so, and you want, and you had mentioned that where you want to go. So can you tell us a little bit about that? And kind of, you touched on your message for your show a little bit too. So I'd love to hear more on that. Thank you for re- recognizing that, uh, that this is an ongoing story of where I'm going. And really, um, where I'm going personally, um, and I think where most of us go, uh, is, is toward our own personal growth. And that's really where I'm going. I, I'm growing into um, the next version of myself because really our lives, you know, the stages and the phases we go through um, really impact how we look at the world and what we do with the time that we have left. And so, yes, in my podcast, um, you know, I started out Mommy Loves. That was maternity. It was at the place I was at that time. I was pregnant. I had newborns. I had, you know, that's where that came from. So I expressed that through that business. And then it grew and changed. And then my life was parenting and dealing with kids and potty training and elementary school and bullies and common core and uh, homework and band and all the things that the kids come into as they grow, then I had to go through those. And so I developed skills that I didn't know I had to navigate that. And so, of course, just like mommy loves, um, I'm a person that doesn't create a business uh, or help other people without first helping myself. So, um, that created the next business and the next phase, which is parent entrepreneur power. Um, and I use those skills uh, like potty training. That's one of the first and most difficult that we have to try and get our kids to do something. Um, and, and most of the time, that's the first time we have to really focus on that. And that skill of being able to know, know your kid enough to know what motivates them and figure out how you can help them develop the ability to go to the bathroom on the pot. Um, That skill is totally transferable in business. So that's where parent entrepreneur power came from because we already have the power as parents to get people to do things and figure out the motivation, the um, perseverance, the adaptability, all those things we have to do as parents, we transfer those because they are directly transferable into business. And so that was the next phase of uh, my life and dealing with that. And now my kids are in high school. Actually, my oldest is starting college next week. And uh, my youngest is a sophomore in high school. So now I'm in the next phase and starting the next phase. I still have my my 14 year old, um, who's going to be 15 next month, but the phases are changing. I'm in that transition and I'm now looking at my exit strategy. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) If you want to look at business and parenting, it's exactly the same. My kids are eventually going to leave me. And when you have little ones, you can't imagine that, but before you know it, you will be facing this and it's weird. It's freaky. And if you don't at least think about it and start preparing um, and help your kid be more independent outside of you, you're going to have a hard time with it. So I'm in that transition phase. And so now I'm thinking about my own freedom and my own identity as something Mm -hmm. other than mom and also something other than entrepreneur. And I'll get into what I mean by that in a minute. But, um, but yeah, it's the next phase. And so that's where the My, Free, My Three Freedoms comes into play. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. The next thing I wanted to ask you is, I think that you've touched on this a little bit, but how has your, has being a mom impacted 
your business? And I think you've touched on it, but is there anything else you want to talk about that specifically? Yeah, yeah. This is this is for me very important, and it leads into again this phase I'm going through right now. Um, because basically, being a mom was my life. Okay, that's it. Everything I did for, you know, a very long stretch, you know, from the time of um, about 1996 uh, until now. So we're talking 20 years, has been toward being a mother. And so it was my life. So it greatly impacted any business that I would be able to start. So, so again, Mommy Loves, I started when my sons were 18 months old and uh, four years, almost four years old. And I also, because I'd lost my job during that time and then got another job, I'd worked part time um, while I was raising my kids and while my husband stayed home. So we traded off, if you will. Um, our schedules. And um, so I worked part-time, he worked part-time until finally 2006. And um, that's when I actually quit my job and started working full-time on Mommy Loves. But while I was doing that, being a mom, I mean, I I had to take care of my kids. I I wasn't going to do daycare. That just wasn't an option for us. So I had to figure out what I was going to do with my kids when I had to work and also what I was going to do with my business when I had to be a mom. So there were a couple of things that I came up with during that time and I I mainly had a schedule and I color coded it with uh, my kids' favorite colors and I put it on the refrigerator and to show them. uh, So basically I tried to stop them from competing with my computer. Because if you have kids, you know, they do that, right? Anytime you sit down to talk on the phone, or if you're going to sit down to the computer, their their bells and whistles go off in their head like, mom's going to have her attention somewhere else. We've got to go get her. Um, So I I came up with a few things, right? You've had that, right? Um, Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Quite a few times. Yeah. So I came up with a couple of things to stop that so that I didn't constantly yell at them to go away, (laughs) which wasn't an option either. I didn't want to do that. So I color coded a schedule, showed him that. And that obviously helped me teach the older one, you know, time and all that stuff. So I could show him your, his green time because green was his favorite color. This is what we're going to do. And this is what time it is. So that's only a short amount of time. So you go do and whatever I'd set up for them to do, you do that until this time. And uh, then that's, then we'll go to the park or we'll go see your friend or we'll do whatever we have on the schedule. I also had a kid's table in my office and we had computer games and books and puzzles and Legos and Thomas the Tank Engine and Pooh Bear and Tonka and all kinds of things that they would work on and play with while I had to do work if there was something I had to do. Because I actually had a production in my office, uh, in my house, it was my spare room. So it was basically like a, a sweatshop almost because it was a hot heat press, 365 degrees. And so I would develop a a production line where I would get all the shirts ready, all the designs ready. And then I would just process all of them all the way through to folding them up, packaging. I had beautiful ribbon and um, foil and things that I did to package them beautifully. And uh, then basically print labels and get ready for the post office. Um, And then of course they started school so then I, you know, I, I actually didn't have as much time as I thought I would. <clears throat> That's another thing you'll look forward to. Believe me, it goes by fast. Um, but my life was my kids, but no more. Actually, in 2008, if you know anything about 2008, that's when the housing crash, you know, the recession hit. Um, so for 2008 and for two years after that, that really changed everything for me. Um, I hung on to Mommy Loves in my whole production and everything through two years after the recession. But that first year, my income dropped by half. And if you remember, I told you in the beginning, my income was doubling every year, starting in 2003. So from 2003 to 2008, it doubled every single year. So I was making really good money. 2008 hit, my income dropped by half. 2009, it dropped by half again. In 2010, it dropped by half again. But I kept hanging on. I took on credit card debt to launch a new line. I thought if I just tried to find wholesalers, I could do that. I tried everything and I kept hanging on to this business. And finally, my accountant is the one who saved me. Um, And he would ask me, why don't you just shut this business down? What is the problem? It's obviously not going where you want it to go and you're working and why are you doing this? And I told him, if my business fails, that means I failed. Mm. And he gave me the best piece of wisdom I've ever heard. He said, you are not your business. And I gave him a 
tear-filled, salty, wet kiss because my accountant is my husband. (laughs) (laughs) I was able to do that. Um, So I sold all my equipment. I outsourced my entire production. uh, And uh, so, yeah, being a mom impacted my business completely. It was my business. It was who I was. Um, And then I had to change that and realize I am not my business. And now I'm realizing I am not just a mom. That is not my identity. It's one of the roles I play, but it's not my identity. And I needed to go through that in order to be able to let my son go and have a girlfriend and go to college and drive himself places and take trips by himself or with his friends or and me not being a basket case because I'm holding on to that role of mom and I can't imagine doing anything else. That is so powerful. I I love that. I talk a lot about um, value and how as women and moms and and people, we have to know that we are valuable as as a person, as a, you know, human, despite of all of this external stuff. So I think that that is a beautiful lesson. We all have those moments where we realize, you know, that we, we have value to bring that is outside, inside of ourselves. And sometimes these layers of roles that we play and the things that we do and the ways that we try to live our lives masks who we truly are. Oh, yes. You, you hit it right there. And I, I really think the things like, uh, you know, I have to tell you, Mariana, I, me going through early labor was not an accident. You know, it made me, uh, th- these things happen for a reason. I really do believe that. My father-in-law has, has said this. I've known this man for probably, let's see, gosh, since I was 16 years old. So we're talking, um, what, 40 years now? Uh, yeah, at least 40 years I've known this man. And he has always said things happen for a reason and they always turn out the best. And it's, I don't, I don't believe it in the way he said it. I believe it. I believe those words because they, they happen for a reason because we put ourselves in situations that create the growth, that create the opportunity for the growth we need. And when I went through early labor, that was an opportunity for me to grow and stop and stop identifying myself as this corporate high, you know, ladder climbing, fast paced type A money making woman. That was the role I had at that time. And I went through early labor and gee, do you know what? They found someone else to do my job until I was able to come back to work. So I wasn't as indispensable as I thought I was, right? (laughs) So I did that, but I didn't learn that lesson. I broke my legs when I was eight months pregnant. And that finally taught me the lesson. If I'd have probably learned it the first time, I probably wouldn't have broken my legs. I don't know. But anyway, that's the way I look at it. Um, So yes, these things happen to us for a reason. And we need to open up, take stock, learn from them and grow. And uh, you are so right. Uh, We are more than just the roles we play. And it really is the internal journey that matters most. Yes, that's so true. So I want to change gears a little bit and ask you about what does success mean to you? Because I think it's so different for everybody. And I want to just, I'm curious about what you think about this. (laughs) Well, um, if you'd asked me, you know, five years ago, my answer would have been different. 10 years ago, my answer would have been different. Um, But my answer now, based on everything we've talked about and all the stories I've shared, um, and that we haven't even we haven't even touched on some of the other things when I was a wrangler on a ranch and I was shot at and almost died and thrown from horses and almost died and you know that's other parts of my story but the mom part of the story um, success really to me is personal growth toward those three freedoms I mentioned before I, I look at them as three three specific freedoms and right now. My personal growth is through entrepreneurship and parenting, which is what I'm doing in Parent Entrepreneur Power. So success to me is growth, personal growth, and inspiring and helping others to do the same. So the mantra that I tell myself every day is, I expand in abundance and success every single day, and I inspire others to do the same. That 
if I did that today, that I was successful. That is success to me. And it leads me into the three freedoms. I have a mental freedom, physical freedom, and of course, financial freedom. And uh, if I'm on my path toward those and I'm experiencing those three things right now, I am a success. That is so wonderful. And I love the three freedoms. I think that that is a really concise way of putting all of the freedom and the things that we want in a very concise way. I love that. Thank you. Well, we have to have mental freedom. We have to be free of the guilt and the, the regrets and the, you know, the, the, you know, we have those conversations in our head that we just loop, right? We might, we just put them on replay all the time that what we should have said or what we should have done or how this might go or how we're going to handle this situation. I mean, we, we're our own worst enemies in our own head. So it starts with that mental freedom and working to stop ourselves from doing those things to ourselves. And if we don't have physical freedom, if we can't move and we can't be, and we can't do the things we want to do, then that's a problem. And of course, both of those then lead toward the financial freedom. If we have the the mental freedom and the physical freedom, we will experience the financial freedom because I'm telling you, abundance comes to you when you free yourself of the encumbrances, the, the, and I'm sorry to say this, but the crap, (laughs) the stuff, right? The stuff we bring with us every day, the baggage, the junk, we free ourselves of that. And it actually frees our energy to be able to make the time to do the things that will lead us toward freedom. Yeah, that's beautiful. So um, what are one or two things that you do every single day to stay on top of your game? Uh, this is this is one of the things that leads me toward these freedoms. And, and I've been doing this for a couple of years now. Um, the number one thing I do every day and the only thing that really impacts my day to help me stay on my game is what I call my power morning routine. And the power, the words, the word itself, each letter stands for something. I'll go through real quick. The P is for peace. And for me, that's meditation. The O is, and, and I'd only, I only meditate for about 15 minutes. When I'm not a guru sitting with my legs crossed for an hour. Okay, I can't do that. Um, <laughs> uh, and the second one is O for openness. And openness for me is a visualization. So if I'm going to look at something, let's say I'm going to do a webinar for something. And I'm, if this is a particular topic and I'm, I, I'm going to conduct this webinar. I go through visualizing myself doing that webinar in the the conversations I'll have and the topic I'm talking about and, and com, you know, communicating and chatting back and forth with the participants to the webinar. So that's to me is openness. I visualize what I need to do. And then the W is three pronged. It's who, what, and why. Who needs my love, my guidance, my acceptance, my support today. And that changes most days. Most of the time it's my kids. When they were younger, it was my kids. Sometimes it's my husband. Sometimes it's a particular client. Um, and sometimes it's myself. So who, what is, what are the three most important money-making tasks I need to accomplish today in order to feel like it was a good day, in order to feel like it was successful? So I write those down. And why, why am I doing this? Why, what's my why? We all know what that means, right? We've all talked about it. We've heard about it everywhere. What's your why? Why are you doing what you're doing? And I write that down every day. Each of these things I write down. Um, E is for exercise every day, whether it's just a walk with the dogs, whether it's yoga, um, whether it's a hit routine, whether whatever it might be. And then R is for reading. Um, And I also include in that consuming information, growth, personal growth, or reading for growth, or reading a blog post, or listening to a podcast, or listening to an audio book. So that's my power morning, and I do it every morning, and it takes me no more than an hour. Um, typically, I'm done within, you know, 45 minutes, and that's it. That I do that, and it sets me up for the day. Now, the what, when I talked about the three tasks, there are other tools that I use to keep myself on track, um, but the, but every day I do this power morning and it sets me up for total focus and, uh, productivity and progress every single day. Thank you. That, that sounds really, really, really nice. <laughs> and, um, thank you for sharing all of that. And you touched on your why, and I know from being a listener of your podcast that 
you talk about having a deeper why than yourself. Can you talk about that for a moment? Yes, I would love to. Um, you know, I really, I am, I know I'm put on this earth to serve. I just know I am. I've, I've done the work to know myself. Um, and so even though, you know, my, my kids are involved in my why. So as you, as you, st- as you go through the different stages in your life, um, your why might change a little bit. And so when you're, when your kids are little, everything is about them, right? I mean, that's the way it is, right? They need us completely. So that is our why, but really we need to go even deeper than that and, um, help them to go deeper than that so that they don't grow up in this wonderful society of, uh, instant gratification, (laughs) expecting Mm -hmm. everyone to do everything for them. Um, we do need to help them understand that it goes even deeper. And for me, it's really serving others and helping. And the only way I can serve others is to serve myself. So I serve myself in the sense of knowing who I am, knowing what I'm here for, and uh, then being able to help others discover that for themselves. And so it does go deeper. Um, it's your ki- it, it, It's always something outside yourself. But just like when you're on that airplane and they give you the instructions if the plane something happens and the oxygen masks come down i mean we all know this it's a it's almost cliche by now but it, you do have to put it on yourself first so you do have to know yourself first and then you can once you do that you can give that assistance to others even mother teresa oh my goodness she had to take care of herself every day in order to serve others. So, um, so yes, it does go much deeper, but I think we are all here to grow and serve and uh, help others around us. So I hope that answered. I don't know if that's what you were looking for. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I have a super deep why, and my mission is to help as many moms to have the freedoms in their life as well. And so that's one of the reasons why I wanted to start this podcast and and why I am so passionate about helping people to see their deeper why as well, because I think it's, it's so much easier when it is um, not as self-serving, right? And it is about service and helping others. It's easier to get through that hurdle of like, how do I go out and have this difficult conversation? Or how do I go out and sell? Um, Those struggles are so much easier when you're doing it from a place of service. Completely. I agree. So um, we're kind of running short on time, but I want to make sure I ask you this one um, question. And that is, if you were to start your business all over again, and you only had three hours per day to work on your business and $5,000, what would you do? (laughs) Yes. Um, Boy, that's that really kind of describes exactly how I started Mommy Loves. I got a $5,000 loan from my father-in-law and I had about 3 hours a day. So, I've done this, but I would do it a little differently than I did because of what I've learned. Um and here's here's what I would do. I would I would based on what my plan is, based on the business that I'm creating for myself. Um, or for my kids or for my world or whatever, whatever business you're creating and why you're doing it, I would break down what exactly do I personally need to do that drives my business forward and that I can break down into only three hours a day. So what tasks do I personally need to do? Okay. And from that, because I was not going to, if I take mommy loves, if I was not going to have people come into my home and do the whole production thing. And I didn't have the money that 5,000 is not going to give me, or I would choose not to spend it on rent to go actually rent some warehouse space. So if I'm still going to do this in my home, I'm going to use that 5,000 as wisely as possible. What do I need to do? I want to actually produce the shirts. I want to design them and put the designs on the shirts, but anything other, and I can do that in three hours a day, anything other than that, anything, I will outsource. I will spend that money on someone else doing whatever is left over. So in order for me to determine, first off, what I can do in three hours a day, I have to take those tasks that I've decided I need to do. And believe me, 
moms out there, you're going to do this. You're going to think, well, I have to do everything or I have to do, you're going to tell yourself you have to do these 10 things. Well, I guarantee you, you don't have to do all those 10 things. So some of the tools that I would use to figure out what exactly I need to do and do I have the time to do it? Number one, I would use a Pomodoro timer. Have you ever used one of those? Yeah, I love those. Yeah. So I would use a Pomodoro timer to really time how long it takes me to do whatever task I'm talking about. And in order to do that as well, the other tool I use or the other mantra I use along with the Pomodoro is what's called Parkinson's Law. And Parkinson's Law tells us tasks will expand to whatever time you give them. So if I tell myself I'm going to write a blog post today, well, then it'll probably take me all day to write it. And I'll probably just play around with it and think about it and go do, you know, load of laundry or take care of this or do that until finally that last, say, half an hour when I'll finally actually get down to work and get it done because I gave myself all day. So tasks will expand to however long you give them. If you take that idea and combine it with a Pomodoro timer, you'll find out really how long it takes you. And then a third tool that I would use for this is rescue time. That is an amazing tool to look back at your week and see really where you spent your time. And then I would schedule everything and stick to it religiously. So that's how I would determine what tasks I have to do in those three hours. And then I would spend that $5,000, the rest of it on someone else. I would get help for someone else to do all the rest of the stuff to get my website up and running, to um, do my email campaigns, to post on social media, except for the few things that I wanted to post that were personal to me. Um, You know, anything else beyond the money-making tasks in my business, I would outsource. And that's what I would use the other 5,000 for. Awesome. Thank you. That is so actionable. And I love the tools that you've mentioned. Um, I still have to get rescue time. Um, but I would highly recommend it. It's amazing. There's a free version or a paid version and it really is, uh, you set it up to the websites that you normally visit and, uh, you, it, it, I have a, I have a timer on there. I have a, um, a reminder on there that if I'm spending, uh, up to an hour, it reminds me if I have spent an hour on any social media in the day. And my goal is to spend less than an hour on any non- Um, productive tasks. And I have determined social media as a non-productive task. So I stack everything in my buffer app the Mm -hmm. night before, um, or, you know, every day I stack something in my buffer app. So I'm ahead um, with all my postings. And uh, if I spend up to an hour, rescue time lets me know that I'm coming up to that hour. And I went, oh, God. And if I've got that hour and it's only 10 o'clock in the morning, I'm in trouble right? <laughs> I can't be on social media for the rest of the day. So, uh, so my goal is to not have that hour ping me, you know, not have your rescue time ping me until like three o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds really good. I think we all need this app. <laughs> yes, it's wonderful. Okay. So is there anything else that I have not asked you that you think would really help a new mom entrepreneur to take their business to the next level? Um, you know, the only thing I would add to that is like, we've been talking about, um, with your, your freedoms, um, and like your purpose and your why, um, your personal why for this podcast and your business. And I would ask every mom listening to think about those three freedoms, your mental freedom, your physical freedom, and your financial freedom and set something up and get help. If it's Mariana, if it's me, if it's someone else, if it's a mentor, if it's a coach, it's who, or even just a podcast you listen to, or, you know, a blog you read every week or whatever, set up something to help you keep those three freedoms top of mind so that every day you're working toward them. Because freedom is not achieved in one giant leap. It is achieved step by baby step every single day. And you do that and you will get there in no time. I, my whole broken legs while pregnant story, I kept telling myself, if I walk like I know where I'm going, I'll get there. That is gold. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. And okay, so how can people find out more about you, Mary Catherine? 
Oh boy. Okay. So the number one place you can go is parent entrepreneur power. And it's instead of worried about how to spell entrepreneur, you can just go uh, parent E power, uh, or you can do parent entrepreneur power dot com, whichever is easiest. And that's where you can pretty much find me. Um, you can also, I have a personal website, Mary Catherine Johnson.com and it's K A T H R Y N Mary Catherine Johnson.com. And that pretty much has everything I do. Um, I wrote a book about this whole broken legs while pregnant story. I've written poetry. I, uh, you know, that's, that's where my writing is, is on Mary Catherine Johnson. And it also talks about all my businesses and everything I've done. Um, but really if you are a mom or dad in business, and especially now you're a mom in business, um, parent entrepreneur power, you already have the power to do everything you need. Um, you just might need a few tools here and there or some inspiration. And uh, I think you might find it there. Awesome. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. And thank you for everything. You are so welcome. And I do have a free offer for your audience if you'd like. Marianne. Absolutely. Oh, fantastic. Um, so if they go to parententrepreneursuccess.com, that's the, the URL, parententrepreneursuccess.com slash mom entrepreneur, they will have a uh, free opt-in, a free gift of the time management structure I talked about, the pull power morning routine. So I will walk them through. I have a whole video training on what that means and how to do it. Um, and I will give that to them uh, for free. If, they, if that's what they think they need, uh, they can do that. Parententrepreneursuccess.com forward slash mom entrepreneur. Awesome. Thank you so much. And thank you for coming on. You are very welcome. Thanks for inviting me. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Mom Entrepreneur Success Podcast. For a list of all the resources that were mentioned here, we have a lot of resources as far as the tools and rescue time and all of the links for Mary Catherine's trainings go to the show notes and you can find that at momentrepreneursuccesspodcast.com or at marianacruiz.com and click on the podcast section. In the next episode of the Mom Entrepreneur Success Podcast, I'm going to share with you my game plan for creating success in your business and in your life. And we're going to start to really and truly defining success for you, as well as designing your business around your life and not the other way around. Because at the end of the day, it's really about creating something that's sustainable. And that's what this game plan will help you to do. All right. So make sure you subscribe so you get all of the updates for that. See you in the next episode. You've been listening to the Mom Entrepreneur Success Podcast. Thanks so much for tuning in. Now, I'd love to hear from you. Head on over to iTunes and leave us a rating and review. By reviewing the show, it allows us to reach more moms to help them grow their businesses. So head on over there, leave us an honest rating, and I can't wait to catch up with you there. By the way, every single week, I'm going to select one winner who leaves a review and you'll be able to get a free strategy session with me in this 20 minute laser focus session. You'll get the information that you need to move your business to the next level of success that you desire. Have an awesome day.